Welcome back to our study of the integral and the integration process. So far in this in this chapter, we've introduced you to the um, the intuition as what as to what an integral is, and we interpreted that as a area under the curve or negative area under the curve if it's under the x-axis. Showed you how to approximate this integral uh, with rectangles called Riemann sums. We used left rectangular methods where we remember it was all about getting the height of the rectangle. Do you use the left side, the right side, the midpoint, or maybe average the left and right and call it the trapezoidal method? Then we talked about a definite integral. And um, a definite integral would have been something like this. We'd compute minus 2 to 1 f of x dx. And that might come up with like a number, 33, okay? This was a definite. Definite meaning we have clear endpoints. x goes from minus 2, x goes to minus 1, right? Clear endpoints, and we call this definite. We showed then a relationship between the antiderivative and the derivative. Um, they were inverse functions of each other in the fundamental theorem. So we learned how to evaluate this with an antiderivative. Now that antiderivative notation is so easy to use, and it simplified the process so much that we come up with another notation we call in this section the indefinite integral. And it's indefinite because notice there's no endpoints here, okay? So what this is just saying is that if we integrate this f of x dx, we're going to get the antiderivative, okay? Antiderivative. And what this is really saying, what this is really saying is that the derivative of the antiderivative is equal to what? Equal to f of x. Now, one thing you might realize, there's not really a unique antiderivative. You know, I could, I could say this is true. I could say this is equal to f of x plus 1. And if I took the derivative of this process, I'd get, well, if I took the derivative of this, what would I get? I'd get f of x plus 0. Well, what if I say it was f of x minus 1. That would also work, wouldn't it? If I took the derivative of the minus 1, I'd get f of x plus 0. Why is that? Because the derivative of a constant is 0. So when we, we're really going to say, the, when we talk about an indefinite integral, we're going to say, when we evaluate, it's going to be equal to the antiderivative plus some constant c plus some constant c. And if you if you look at that, we could even do one here. Let's see here. Uh, say I want to integrate the function. We'll do something simple here. Uh, x, 2x, dx. And you'd tell me, well, I know what that's going to be. I think it's going to be x squared plus c. Okay, if I take the derivative of this side, sure enough, I'm going to get, I'm going to go back to 2x. So I'm pretty confident that is right. Now, what does the plus c do? Well, it kind of creates this, what I'd call family of functions. Of, let's try that again. We got a family. Let's see if I can do a decent drawing here. Um, well, I might have, this is like the core one, x squared, right? That would be x squared. And we change colors here and say, well, right inside here, we got x squared plus 1. We'll do one down here. x squared, what's that one? x squared minus 1, and so on. I could, I guess I can draw some crazier ones here. Let's try that one. Whoop. I get a whole set of these, these functions. And notice they all have exactly, they all have exactly the same derivative. 
they all have the same shape. The only difference is, is that they, they're separated by some constant C. You give me a different C, I'm going to give you a different curve. So it's like the perfect family, so I like to describe it. Everybody has their own space. None of these curves ever touch each other, ever touch each other. And the only thing I need to know in order to determine one derivative, one antiderivative, or one member of this family is some point on the curve. So if you gave me an initial point or so, I would say, okay, this must be the curve, x squared minus 1. So anyway, an, an indefinite integral produces the antiderivative plus the, this is called the constant of integration. And it creates a family of functions. Okay. Here's a, here's a table of indefinite integrals that you should know. There's really not that many that you have to be aware of. Am I still recording? Oh, yes, I am. Um, and you'll, this is on your, in your book, section 5.4. You know, if you scale a function by C, you just scale the indefinite integral. Okay, if you integrate indefinite integral, integral of a constant k is just constant times x plus notice the constant integration and these are integration pairs here right this is the way I think of it the derivative of minus cosine is the sine the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared the derivative of this power rule here gives us back to our power uh, the derivative of the sine is the cosine all right and here's a little process saying that integration is linear if I'm adding two functions together, I can integrate each function separately. Okay, so that's our table of indefinite integrals. Notice there's not too many. We're going to add a few more to this during the year, and then we're going to introduce um, only one integration technique in the next section called substitution. And these are the only ones we, we really need to know. These add about three more and one technique. Okay. Now I'd like to play a little game with you, just to make sure you really understand this as to each one of these expressions, because the notation gets a bit thick. Notation gets a big thick, a, a bit thick. So the question here is, is it a number, a function, or a family of function? Okay, how about this first one here? The first one, I'm going to integrate some function u from 1 to 2. Is that a function of x? The answer would be no. This is just a number. Okay. How about this second one? Well, notice I have an x down here. I could write this as, well, what's the antiderivative of g? Well, let's say it's capital G of t at 2, and x is just going to be capital G of 2 minus capital G of x. It's not a family of functions. There's no constant of integration. It's just a function. This is just a function. Well, I just said better not. Function. Okay, let's see the next one here. H of t. Well, here, notice there is no lower limit. I'm just going to, and I'm going to, this is going to get me some h of t. This is going to be h of t plus c. This is a family family of functions, okay? This one here, again, that's just like before. This is just a function. This is going to be g of u minus g of negative 3. This is a function. This is a function, not an indeterminate integral, indefinite integral. How about this one up here? Now they're getting a little bit. What's the answer to a? Well, this is just a number, right? <clears throat> That's just a number. What is a derivative of a number? That's equal to zero. Th this here, this is a, that's a function. In fact, that's going to be what? It's really going to be the negative. Oh, no, it's going to be the positive sine of x minus the sine of 1. You 
take the derivative of that, guess what? You're just getting back to where you started from. Didn't even need to do this. I didn't need to do this. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. That's just going to be, that's the cosine of x. That's a function. Okay, so you don't, don't let the notation get you when you work inside out. This one here. <clears throat> well, inside we have a family of functions. That's just capital F of x plus c, but when we take the derivative, what's the derivative of, in fact, this is, uh, this better be an x here. What's the derivative of th that? It's going to give you f of x plus 0. That's just a function. What about this one here? Or maybe I was trying to, and this one here, we're going to get the same thing. This is just going to be g of x, a function, okay? So lots of little notation here. Make sure you know you don't get frightened by the notation. Know what's a number, what's a function, what's a family of function. Take the derivative of a number, you're going to get zero. Okay, let's do a little example um, of an integration problem then using this concept of, of the antiderivative and that table that we just saw. Um, if we integrate this, remember we can write this as the following. I can break this up into two pieces. That's just going to be the integral from 0 to 12 of 12x dx plus the integral from 0 to 12, the sine of x dx. These are two things I would know. Well, what's the antiderivative of 12x? That's just going to be 6x squared. Verify yourself. If I take the derivative of 6x squared, sure enough, I'm going to come back with 12x. I'm going to evaluate that at 12 and 0. Plus, well, how do I get a sine of x? Um, well, I know it's the cosine. I think about the derivative of the cosine. Well, that's the negative sine. Okay, wait a minute. I need a negative here. Negative cosine from 12 to 0. Okay, so what's this going to evaluate to? This is going to be 6 times 12 squared minus 6 times 0. That's this thing right there. That's going to be what? 6 times, times 144. Plus, so what does this become? This is minus the cosine of 12 minus a minus cosine of 0, which is 1. So this is just going to be minus the cosine of 12 plus 1, okay? So there's my, you can simplify that a bit, but this is how I take, you know, without adding up areas, I'm not, I'm not drawing this function. I could draw the function, get a, get a look at it, but I'm just taking the concept of antiderivatives, breaking these up, recognizing I know the derivatives to go backwards correctly, using the fundamental theorem to plug in, and here's my answer. Okay, I think uh, we'll call that part one, part one of uh, 5.4, and we'll come back and make a second video talking about adding up net change, uh, looking a little bit at particle motion. Finding, I'll, we'll show you an easy way to calculate distance. Okay, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.